I'm Alice McKenzie and welcome to Must Reads, a series of interviews with authors of recent books on preaching sponsored by the Perkins Center for Preaching Excellence at SMU. Today, my guests are Dr. O. Wesley Allen Jr., the Lois Craddock Perkins Professor of Homiletics at Perkins School of Theology, and Carrie, Professor Carrie LaFurl, Marriott Endowed Professor of Ethics and Culture at the Timberland Advertising Institute at Southern Methodist University. So welcome to you both. Thank you. My two colleagues have collaborated in a book called Preaching and the 32nd Commercial, Lessons from Advertising for the Pulpit. This is the first volume. There we go. Yes. You're, well, let's see. You need, how about this? Okay, there we go. Yes. <laughs> yes, there we go. Great cover. So this is the first volume in an in innovative interdisciplinary series called the Preaching And series. And this series is co-sponsored by our Center for Preaching Excellence here at Perkins and Westminster John Knox Press. It's called Preaching And because it pairs a homiletician with a scholar from another field. They collaborate in conversation and writing and see what fresh insights can be sparked for preaching. So this is our, our maiden volume in what will be a multi-volume series. So thanks for being with us and for this intriguing book. And at first glance, some preachers would say, well, Mar you know, um, what does advertising have to do with, with preaching? But you all come up with a, a short and sweet common ground at the very beginning, and that is that it is brand initiated communication intent on impacting people, which, which fits both. The other thing that some people would say is, well, you know, advertising is materialistic, it has shallow values, and it, it adds to people's insecurities. But, but, but Carrie, in your part, your contribution to the book, you offer positive images of advertising as offering a positive Im image of humanity, a social message, and, and point to some public service ads on fatherhood and anti-bullying. So you really, you really show us the best in advertising. So common, common ground, preaching and advertising, and then also some common hurdles, because you have a great chapter on how communication has changed, where you point out it's not 1950 anymore, and the listeners are not the same uh, as they were then. So we've got this linear to multi-directional communication, experience more important than facts. People want to contribute to meaning making and not be passive recipients. So common ground, common hurdles. And on that basis, then you all very insightfully offer insights from four uh, areas of uh, the interface between preaching and advertising. So, so the, the first one would be understanding the audience. So Carrie, could you give us a highlight about what you all call market segmentation? Sure. Um, so one of the things that's really important with advertising is, and especially today, is you need to be able to connect with your consumer. And uh, consumers are different. And more than ever, they're different. So you need to find where you have consumers that are similar. Sometimes it might just be a demographic, uh, age group, or education, but other times it might be a hobby or uh, something that somebody's interested in. And so you want to try to segment people based on their likes and preferences that are similar that you can resonate uh, then with the brand and make the brand personally relevant to them. Hmm. So, so Wes, I think you point out that a lot of preachers think, well, I understand my congregation intuitively where in reality they might uh, be thinking they're more homogeneous or, um, or different, an outdated kind of perspective on them. So how, how um, the part where you talk about focus groups and how they might yeah. be used. So one of the things that um, I, I really learned from Carrie as we wrote this was about the fact that um, um, businesses putting out a product have to constantly rethink who their market is because it's a changing market. And even if it's the same people, it's still a changing market. And so our congregations are sort of a changing market. And so one of the things is to use this market segmentation to analyze our congregation in different ways. And, and one of the creative ways we came up with, I think, is to do like advertising does and get a focus group together. Only as a preacher, week after week, you have to sort of create one imaginatively. Hmm. So around where people sit and gather eight or so people in your mind 
and use these people for a couple of months as a focus group and ask of them, what would Mark need from the sermon? Who is of a certain age, of a certain personality type, et cetera? And what would Sarah need, who's of a different segmentation? And sort of think through them as your smaller audience of the big congregation and change that out over your preaching time. But it's a way to make sure your message is concrete and targeted towards specific people. Hmm. So understanding the hearer is one lesson that you all yes. you all talked about. Then another one was was advertising strategies for shaping the message that can be helpful for preachers. So so Carrie, am I pronouncing it right? Ida, A I D A. Sure. Yes. And Ida. Ele elevator speech of what Ida is. Um, Ida is an acronym that we use, and it's about uh, the key things you want to be thinking about with your message in an ad. So you want to be getting attention and awareness for your brand. Uh, and then you want to move on to interest, and then you want to have the consumer somehow more engaged with your ad and your product, so then they get a desire for it, and then action, that they actually go out and then purchase the product and build a relationship with your brand. Okay, so, so Wes, how does that translate to preaching? Well, so those are all qualities you want in a sermon, but one of the ways we played with it, which is a little different than it might be used in advertising, is to think of it as a fourfold process. A sermon could unfold through first, you know, grabbing attention and how do you shock the people in a sense to go, oh, what's this about? And then deepen their interest until they really have a desire for the gospel you're offering. And then, of course, leading uh, in the end either to action they do or to a proclamation of the action of God as this uh, unfolds and you, you sort of respond uh, to what God is doing. Okay, so understanding the hearer and then sequencing the message. And then, then you turn to the use of story within the message. So Carrie, this is like a very ground level question, but uh, what makes stories and advertising advertisements more effective than facts? Just the facts. Yeah, well, I think one, people can remember stories better, uh, first of all. So you may hear a bunch of facts, but you you're really won't be able to quote them. So hearing a story, also stories allow you to build a context for people to really resonate with. So it might not even be your own context, but you can see a picture uh, uh, unfolding and see how it might play and be relevant in your life. Hmm. And Wes, how would that how would that sharpen our story making skills as preachers? Well, one of the things that really interests me about this project and in getting into it was that in advertising, you have to tell a story in a very short amount of time. I mean, 30 seconds is a long time for advertising. They have a lot shorter um, you know, on Internet, et cetera, now. And so uh, preachers often ramble in their storytelling. So how do we get those stories to have the same kind of impact but get them shorter? And one of the, the uh, concepts that Carrie brought from advertising literature and storytelling literature is the stickiness uh, mm. of a sermon, what, uh, of a, a story, what makes it stick so that it can have impact. And I, I thought that was a very helpful way of thinking about it. not just telling a story that illustrates, but how do you tell a story that helps stick to the people so that they take the gospel with them? Okay, so you have to connect the story emotionally with the brand, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah so that they that it embeds, yeah. Uh, so and then that they come back, that the people want to come back to the brand and come back to to the next sermon. Right, exactly. So the final the final um, interface that that I found was that uh, that between an advertising campaign and sermons, perhaps especially sermon series, but sermons over time. So Carrie, uh, what is an ad campaign? So we, often you'll see ads on TV and that's an individual ad, but usually it's part of a bigger umbrella that is a campaign. Uh, a good example is something like Fruit of a Loom, Fit for Me. It was <laughs> underwear and the umbrella was Fruit of a Loom, Fit for Me, but yet they placed themselves in different um, vehicles, different media outlets where they may be targeting women, men, elderly. <laughs> Um, and so the ad, while it was still Fruit of a Loom fit for me, it could be targeted towards different segments, like we talked about earlier, that would make it more personally relevant to those different groups of people. Okay, so there's a real strategic thinking behind it. So yeah. once, when we turn to sermons, then I love your, your um, labeling of this a proclamation campaign. I just thought that was genius. 
So, so what are some one or two things you might pull from advertising to sharpen our proclamation campaign? Well, yeah, I mean, so as you know, one of my interests in, in writing for years has been the cumulative effect of preaching that um, every preacher knows that we, we hope for that one sermon that's going to lead to the baptism of 3,000 people, but really it's the preaching week after week to the same people. But nowadays, people aren't there every week anymore. They come twice a month or once a month, etc. So you want sermons that sort of overlap. They continue some of the themes that show up week after week, month after month, year after year, but also I think tagging into other places where we communicate with our people so that what you're saying in a sermon is part of a campaign of what you're saying on your social media, in your newsletters, etc., so that the proclamation of the gospel gets expanded beyond the, the, the sermonic moment, but in a way that strengthens the sermonic event hmm. as well. Hmm. Well, thank you for this book, uh, as, as we come to a close here, that, that really uh, makes uh, sparks fly between your two fields and uh, uh, offers readers real insights into uh, how to tell stories, how to understand readers, how to sequence sermons, and then, as you say, how to preach over time in our proclamation campaign. So thanks to both of you for being here today and for this intriguing and very helpful book. And again, it is called Preaching and the 30-Second Commercial, Lessons from Advertising for the Pulpit. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this interview on Preaching and the 30-Second Commercial with Dr. Allen and Dr. LaFerl, the first volume in our Preaching and series. The second volume is entitled Preaching and Humor, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Pulpit. It's a work in progress right now. I'm collaborating on it with Professor Owen Lynch from SMU. Owen is an expert in communications with special interest in the history, theory, and contemporary function of humor in today's world. He and I are hosting a workshop on October the 18th at Perkins on the topic for anyone who is interested. And we will come out with our book in the winter of 2022. So come to our website if you'd like to find out more about Dr. Allen, Dr. LaFerl, and their book on advertising and preaching, and if you'd like to register for the workshop in October. Thanks.